All right, so it's a Q&A session number three. As you can see, I'm just kind of dressed up. I just got back from a holiday party uh, with my department. So the supply department had a holiday party today and uh, which we wore like ugly sweaters. And at the same time, we brought toys that we can donate for the children. So Toys for Tots. Uh, and so I'm out here now to do a I think this is the third Q&A session. All right, so first question of the day comes from MagTech Blue. Uh, he wants me to talk about the experience and learning advice in A school. So as far as the experience, uh, it doesn't matter where you are, always experience new and different things uh, because you can learn from each different experience and you can have a great story uh, when you look back at your experience and memories. So always take you know different position. Like when I was in A school, I was in boot camp terms, RPOC of my division. So in, in A school terms, I was the CEO of my fleet of like you know 100, 150 people, and it was a great experience. You know, I got to uh, command, do a lot of commanding. Like when we're marching, I got to do the commands, and I could, I got to you know, it, we got graded on our performance. So it was a very very rewarding experience. Um, so I really enjoyed it. At the same time, learning, learning advice. So you really want to be top of your class because there's a lot of benefits like promotions that come along with it, awards and all that kind of stuff. And uh, as far as learning advice, <clears throat> it, it really comes down to whoever wants uh, the promotion. Right? If there's a class of 100 people, you know, whoever, whoever really, really wants to be promoted is going to get it because they're going to spend the most time and they're going to use their time the most effective way. And, uh, you know, there's really, there's, as far as learning advice, you just have to, you just have to read a lot. You just have to go over your notes and take the time to read over and over until, you know, you memorize it, okay, until this becomes like a second nature to you. That's really the only best advice that I can give you. I'm not a very big study person. Uh, I, I like to read and enjoy reading my own personal like type of books. Uh, I don't really like to like follow a curriculum. Um, so I'm not a very uh, expert or knowledgeable in that field. So, I mean, if you want to, I mean, just hang out with a lot of smart people, a lot of people who are uh, top of their class. Like I said before, you know, if you want to be all A's, you know, you have to be hanging out with all A students. You can't be hanging out with all C students if you want all A's, okay? So, second thing. Oh, life and also life after A school. Well, life after A school is the fleet. You just go straight to the fleet. Uh, you can uh, take five, you can take up to 15 days away. Depending on your school, depending on your school, how long your school is, uh, you can take leave. So. You can also take RAP duty, which is five days of free work day. Um, you can take five RAP duty days, which you go home uh, near your local recruiting station and you help your uh, recruiter. So that doesn't count towards your vacation. So let's say you came out of A school, I mean, a boot camp, so two months. And uh, let's say your A school was two months. So now you have, you know, you, each month you get 2.5 days. Uh, now you have 10 days stacked up, and then now you also put five days of wrap duty. Now you get 15 days off um, to go home. Okay. Also, you really want to remember uh, and also coordinate well with certain events. So let's say, you know, when I got when I finished A school, which was September, end of September, and I came here, uh, you know, I didn't take any days off. Uh, because I wanted to, because I, we, my family and I were planning to go to uh, Korea the next year. So I wanted to stack up my vacation days because you only get like 30 in a year. And also I wanted to go home for Christmas. So I, I saved up for that. But a lot of people who took it, who took the vacation right out of A school, you know, they can't go home because they don't have enough vacation days saved up. So, you know, make sure that you plan ahead for your vacations. And uh, life after A school, you just go to your fleet, uh, wherever you're stationed. All right. So second question comes from future sailor Danza, which is, is there a high demand for AOs? So, you know, I'm not, I'm not very well educated or knowledgeable in specific rates. I can only tell you guys uh, from what I hear. And from what I hear, any aviation rate is always in demand. And it all, any 
aviation rate is always on stress. Uh, they're, they're always stressed uh, while they're actually on deployments, while they're actually working, uh, because they work extremely long hours on the very stressful environment. And also, they get promoted faster. So that's that's the only thing that I've heard. I'm not. I can't really verify that it's true, uh, because I'm not a very aviation. I'm not an aviation person. I don't really know a lot of aviation people because I only work with supply people for the most part. All right. So the next question comes from Future Sailor Jordan Hughes, and um, what ships have I been on? Well, I can't tell you what ship. Uh, because you know, I don't want to give off my location. I know a lot of you guys ask uh, where I live, uh, what ship I'm working in. I'm not going to answer that, okay? I'm not going to answer that. Uh, but I've only been in one ship, okay? And uh, I'm, I'm contracted to be with my ship for five years. Uh, it's, it's a carrier. I mean, there's only one. There's like only eight carriers in the world. Uh, so, or eight, yeah, eight carriers in the world. So I'm in one of the eight. All right. Next question comes from Mr. Ethan JB. Are you able to take trips home while you are in a school? So yes, you are. Uh, and how that works is, let's say, uh, you, let's say it's like a four-day weekend. You get like Thanksgiving day off, you know, the Friday off, and then Saturday and Sunday. As long as it's in within driving distance. Uh, you are able to. I'm not too sure. Like, I, if you really want to spend like two, three hundred dollars, maybe four, five hundred dollars, depending where it is, on like a train ticket home just for four days, you're not gonna even be able to spend like all four days. Do you know what I mean? Because you're gonna have to like ride home, and then uh, you're realistically going to spend like two days. But uh, if you really want to spend that, I, I don't see why not. As long as uh, your command allows it, your A school command, at the same time, if you fill out the proper paperwork. But if you have a car, if you have a vehicle, I, I know some people who drove like 400 miles to go home. Um, so, I mean, they filled out the proper paperwork or they even rented a car, uh, which which was okay. Um, so, yeah, you are able to go home. You, you are able to take trips home while you are in A school. Uh, second question comes from American Gamers, and he wants me to talk about my thoughts on Marine, Army, Air Force, and the Navy. So, uh, you know, when I first <clears throat> joined, you know, I was talking with my one of my uh, my uncle, and he's a 20-year uh, veteran of the Army, and even he recommended, you know, if you're going to join, you know, I recommend Air Force number one, Navy number two and the Army number three and Marines number four. Um, specifically because <clears throat> Navy and Air Force value education, Army and Marines are more of, uh, you know, you get trained and you go to war, you go, you get deployed. And so let, on, a, on a safe point, like if you, if you, if you don't want to get injured or your, your legs missing, you know, I would say, in my opinion, uh, look into joining the Air Force and the Navy, and if you are looking to you know seek action adrenaline, I would say look more into Army and uh, Marines, and also if you maybe want education, uh, I would say go go with Air Force and the Navy. All right, so that's my thoughts on the four different branches. Also, there's Coast Guard, but I'm, I'm not I don't I actually don't really know much about them. Uh, I just know that. Sometimes their deployments are longer than the Navy's. The longest deployments for Navy personnel is like nine months. Uh, I know sometimes theirs, theirs is longer. At the same time, I've heard like they're the most best kept secret because not a lot of people know much about them. And, uh, but I, I personally don't know much about them. Uh, if you are interested in the Coast Guard, look into it, see their living conditions and their everyday work. All right. So next question comes from Ryan's vacation. How would I know if my recruiter is trying to play me? Uh, I already said this before, uh, which is if you don't trust your recruiter, make sure you call a different recruiting station in a different state. Okay, you don't want to call a another local recruiting station nearby uh, because most likely they know each other and they're gonna have each other's back. However, if you call like in a different state, you know, a couple states over, um, maybe they'll still cover. You know, maybe they, maybe they're still lie, but uh, for the most part, I would say they're not going to. Uh, I would say they're going to tell you the truth. Or uh, if you if if that doesn't work, um, when whenever your recruiter says something, you know, ask for the paperwork. You know, tell me, tell me, show me the documentation. Show me the paperwork. If they're gonna promise you something, uh, ask them to show you the paperwork 
where it states that, uh, and then just try to have a copy of it. Uh, because if your recruiter tells you one thing, and if he can, if he can get it on paper, and then you know it turns out it's not true, well then the recruiter is going to be in some deep trouble. Uh, because if you have paperwork, if you have the actual documentation where it states whatever they're promising, whatever they're saying, uh, then it would be much more legitimate. Okay, it would be much more believable. Um, so I would always say, you know, it's either call a different recruiting station or ask them for the paperwork. You know, if they're going to promise you something, well, if you join, you get, you know, $10,000. Well, then, all right, show me the paperwork. All right. So that's my two advice with that. So the next question comes from Danny Saylor. So he wants to he wants me to talk about my current experience in the Navy and am I enjoying it? So my current experience, I mean, I'm not really experiencing the true Navy uh, because you know I'm not on deployment. I'm not actually working, uh, doing my job in the ship uh, because my ship is under uh, reconstruction. You know, taking everything out, putting new stuff in. Uh, so I'm, I'm only doing like the maintenance work, like cleaning, dusting, painting, all that kind of stuff. So I can't really talk to you about my Navy experience. However. With what it is so far, you know, I don't. I'm, it's not too bad. Uh, I, I, I mean, I enjoy every single day. You know, I get paid to clean. I get paid a lot of money to paint. I get paid a lot of money to dust stuff, a lot of stuff. So it's a, it's very, you know, if you, in a way, it's a very easy life. But uh, I know a lot of people who have been doing this for a year are very demoralized because you know, you know, they, when they first joined, they were talked up. Oh, you're going to be doing awesome things, shooting bombs and you know, working with million dollar accounts and they're over here, you know, painting and cleaning. So in that sense, it's not very uh, glorious or it's not very um, uh, something, it's not something that you can look forward to. However, you know, if you look for, if you look at it in many different ways, you know, it's, it's awesome and it's, it's a good experience. And also, I mean, in, in, far, in regards to as like maybe like personal uh, development-wise, am I becoming a better person through the Navy? Uh, that's a tricky question. Uh, for me, I'm always all about learning, all about personal development, always improving myself. Uh, in that sense, yes, uh, because you know I have a lot of free time. Uh, I don't have a lot of expenses because you know in the civilian world there's so many different expenses like cell phone, car, insurance, all that kind of stuff. But when I'm here, you know, I don't I don't need a car. I don't need any insurance. The Navy provides everything for me, so I I don't I can save a lot of money at the same time. You know, I can spend my time and money on doing the things that I love to do, like making videos, reading a lot of books, and so um, and far as 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 far as that sense, yes. And I, am I enjoying it? Yeah. I'm enjoying every single day. Can't complain. I mean, the only thing is, I kind of wish uh, I had my own room, but uh, living with different roommates. Like today, like uh, my roommate uh, left the lights on. He went. He left early. I, I left late, and um, my roommates just left the lights on because I wanted to get some extra sleep because I, I could get in later for the holiday party uh, because I had to get. By, to work at 10 and he had to get to work at 7 so he just left the lights on and just left um, and he always trashes the room but I mean that's just my stuff it's okay but you know it's just like privacy wise you don't get a lot of privacy and cleanliness I'm a cleaning person I like to be you know squared away put everything neat and tightly but uh, but it's okay I mean only thing is privacy but um, but it's alright that's the part of the experience right so uh, next question comes from Charles Dobbins. And Charles Dobbins asks, how do you address a petty officer or a chief? So when you're in book, I mean, this is not as, it's not as strict when you're out in the real fleet. Um, uh, but when you're in boot camp, so you, for example, when you're on watch on boot camp, a watch is basically you're going to be standing in front of a door or uh, moving around the compartment. And if you're standing in front of the door, let's say a petty officer walks in to the compartment, compartment is like a room, uh, you're gonna say, you're gonna salute and say, you know, good morning, petty officer, Simu Crew Kent Division 25, you know, 25 whatever, uh, standing by for further instructions, petty officer. So that's what you would say, you know. So I, my, I was a Division 251, so it would be like this. Uh, 
Good morning, Petty Officer. See me recruit Kim, Division 251, standing by for further instructions, Petty Officer. Or if it was a chief, it's the same thing. Good, good morning, Chief. See me recruit Kim, Division 251, standing by for further instructions, Chief. So it's a sandwich. Uh, but when you're in the fleet, I mean, it's not, it's not like that. You would just say, let's say it's an LS, right? It's, it's, it's a person with a rate, LS rate, and it's a first class. So uh, you would say LS1. And then there's so many, you know, LS ones. You would, then you would say they're like LS one name, so it would be like LS one Kim. So uh, that's how you would address them uh, when you're out in the fleet, and you don't sandwich it. So you would just say no LS one, no yes LS two, or whatever, all right? <clears throat> but for boot camp purposes, you would sandwich it. And the last question comes from Jason Persinius. And uh, Dan Dobbins. So it's a, a, a combination of the question because you know, I'm going to be answering it. Um, Jason Persony has asked about graduation. So when you graduate from boot camp, you know, what happens? I, and I, always, I, addressed this, I addressed this in my last Q&A. Um, a lot of the questions, guys, you ask me are like the questions I always, always uh, already answered. At the same time, I already have a lot of videos for. Um, so it's kind of, uh, I, I would say, you know, watch other videos first before you ask, ask me a question, but it's okay still. So, but uh, anyway, graduation. So on, you would graduate most, you, yeah, you always graduate on Fridays and uh, you graduate very early in the morning. And after you graduate, uh, if your A school is in uh, Great Lakes, then you would take the bus, go to, go to your A school, drop off your stuff. And then you would see your family afterwards. Or if your A school is in a different state, uh, like like you are, Jason, then you would, uh, after you graduate, you go go back to your compartment where you where you live, where your stuff is, um, and then drop down your drop down your uniform or change your uniform. Uh, you don't change your uniform, but you have like stuff that you carry with you. You would drop that off, <coughs> and then. You would sign out at the same time, go out and then see your family, spend time for you know, a couple of hours and then come back. And then later that night or midnight the next day, you would, uh, you would take the flight to your A school destination. And that would be that. And uh, then Dabbins asked, you know, what's your first day at A school? When, when you arrive your first day, you basically rest because, you know, You've been, you've been on the plane for a very long time or you've been taking a train for a long time or uh, you've been on a bus ride for a long time. Uh, it's like a day to settle down. Uh, the next day, uh, you would start you know, setting up for classes. Uh, in doc, brief, in doc is basically uh, <clears throat> when, you come, when you check in somewhere, then you're in doc. You're, I can't really describe what NDOC is, but when you check in, you show your medical record, dental record, and your personal record, and then you, you check in with the new command. Uh, when you leave the command after you graduate, you will be out doc. So out doc is when you leave, in doc is when you check in. So that is that on your first day, you would basically organize your stuff after you drop your stuff off, and it's a day of resting, a uh, day of when you can just settle down and say, well, I'm, I'm in A school now, or I'm in my new command now. Uh, they're not gonna make you work your first day. So the first day is usually just a rest day. All right, guys, so that is it for the first Q &A, uh, third Q&A session. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, more questions, remember to put it on the Monday's video. And uh, if you have any quick questions, I mean, leave it in the comment section below and I'll answer it real quick. But if, you're, if you want your questions to be in the video, uh, always leave it on Monday's video for me to answer your questions. All right, guys, and always uh, try to look at different videos before you ask me a question because a lot of these questions are, are what I always covered in my other previous videos, um, which I don't mind talking about again. But a lot of the times, <clears throat> people ask me for their rates too. A lot of people ask me for their rates. Uh, you know, I'm, I've only been in for a very short time, guys. You know, I, I can't. I don't really meet a lot of people uh, working in a very small, secluded department. Uh, but 
you know, I, I do try my best. I do try to talk to a lot of people and find out different rates. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions in the comment section below, press that like button and subscribe for more. Thank you and have a great Navy Day, guys.